Well, it started out as three things. Then I went around the country doing three things, not to say to a veteran, and then veterans would come up to me and they'd say, you know, I hate it when, and I'd say, okay. Then I would add that, and so it got up to seven things. These simple misconceptions that can really be the difference, you know. The first thing is not to ask what you did over there. Innocent versions of this is what was your job, what was it like? The bad versions of this is how many people did you get to kill, did you get to kill anybody? As if it's some kind of privilege. If you answer that question or even think about it for a second, you instantly bring the memories back and you can trigger a PTSD bout. So we just avoid, don't ask what you did over there. Number two is, and this is a normal thing, uh, we try to relate to each other in this community. So um, people will say that they know somebody who's a veteran or their brothers, uncles, cousins, nephews, sister. It's an attempt to make the connection, but unless your unless you're, um, spouse or the person you live with on a daily basis is a PTSD veteran, you just don't know. Number three is don't say what you would have done. Uh, this happens a lot. People will say, I didn't join the military, but if I would have, I would have been a, a sniper. What it really is, is an attempt to steal honor. If you can say what you would have done by being there, you're trying to get a little of that honor and you don't, you don't get that. So don't, don't say what you would have done or that you would have going to join or that you thought about it or that you're, you know, you, you were going to, you were going to enlist, but your knee didn't just, just, just don't. Number four uh, is uh, I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad you didn't get hurt over there. I'm glad nothing bad happened to you. I heard this a lot when I got home. PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, MST, military sexual trauma, military rape, and TBI, traumatic brain injury, are known as invisible injuries. You cannot tell from looking at me that I have you know, severe and debilitating insomnia, PTSD, anxiety, depression, and you're not gonna be able to tell from a woman or anyone who's been raped in the military about their trauma, and same with TBI. So. Just don't assume that they're uninjured. There's a great saying that everyone who goes to war is injured. Nobody comes home uninjured. So don't assume that they're not hurt just because you can't see it. Number five is get over it. Put it behind you. You've been home for 20 years. PTSD is not a choice. Uh, when it's not external stimuli such that triggers the memories, uh, it's internal. Uh, it's uh, intrusive thoughts. Not a day goes by that I don't have some intrusive thought about some of the horrible things that happened in Iraq. And if I could stop thinking about them, I would, you know. We wouldn't say that to someone in a wheelchair, you know. Why don't you just stand up and get over it? It's like, it doesn't work that way. Number six is uh, try not to empathize. So one time I was at a conference and I was talking about a particularly nasty bout of insomnia that lasted about six weeks of, of less than a couple hours of sleep a night. And afterwards, a gentleman said to me, uh, you know, when I was studying for my PhD, I had to stay up for like three nights, so I know how you feel. And while insomnia is insomnia, you know, I heard him comparing the underlying symptoms. So these horrible nightmares and things that, I, I, that keep me up versus his choice. So just don't try to relate to the symptoms. And the last one, um, and this happens a lot when people hear this message or they hear about any message, they'll offer to help. And they'll say things like, you know, you can call me anytime you want, need help. Um, but if you're not trained for crisis prevention, uh, you may not know what you're getting into. And if a veteran, if you offer your card to a veteran and they call you at three in the morning, you know, from the streets and you're tired because you meant it in the moment, but not now. I can almost guarantee you that's, that's the last time that veteran reaches out. So it's better to make it about the veteran and not about the individual. Don't, you know, it feels good to offer help. Rather than offering personal help, find the resources in your area. Call the CBSO here in Wisconsin, they're called CBSOs, they're called different things across the country. Call the BFW Hall, find out the local resources, find out the suicide prevention. You know, if you run into a veteran on the street, instead of handing them your card, hand them the card of whoever, whoever does this work professionally in your area, you know. And those are the seven things.